This screencast is an introduction to the baseball simulation exercise that we're going to be doing uh, this semester. As you know, you and several other students have been given the roster of a Major League Baseball team from 2011. And in preparation for the simulation, your job is to choose the 25-man roster, just like in the Major Leagues, the 25-man roster that's going to be playing for you uh, during our simulation. So it's your job to come up with batting lineups and to come up with starting pitching rotations and to decide how you want to use your relief pitchers, whether you want to use one particular pitcher as a closer and another as an eight, eighth inning reliever and so forth. So how do you go about doing that? Well, there's a wealth of information on baseball statistics on the web. And one site that I find the most useful and easiest to navigate is called Fangraphs. So it's easy to get there. You can just type fangraphs.com in your browser. But I have a, a link here on our Moodle page. So I'm going to click on that. And that will take us to Fangraphs. You will see that in the upper left, there's a box, a search box. And so you can type a player's name in there and get all kinds of information on him. And let's consider first our position players. So we have a list of possible position players on our team, on our big roster. And we want to decide who's going to be our starting uh, first baseman, let's say. And let's say that we have on our roster James Loney. So it's going to type James Loney in and hit return. And his information will pop up. And we can see that Loney is a left-handed batter and also a left-handed thrower, and he's a first baseman. So what we're going to do is to scroll down to 2011. Remember, the simulation that we're going to be doing is based on the 2011 season. So just highlight 2011 there to make it easy to see. We can see that he came to bat quite a lot uh, in 2011 for the Dodgers. He was essentially an everyday player. Take a look at his batting average over toward the right. We can see that he batted 288. And you remember from our Stata exercise uh, that 288 is pretty darn good batter. So it's getting up toward the toward the top quartile of, of batters in Major League Baseball. His on-base percentage is pretty decent, and his slugging percentage, a measure of power, um, is okay, not particularly high. We can see that he had... Uh, relatively little success drawing walks. That's a fairly low walk rate, about one time out of every 15. But then again, he didn't strike out all that often, uh, only about one time out of nine, and that's not particularly high. So he's a, a person that's going to get the, the bat on the ball a fair, a fair amount of times. We can also look over here on the... Or we can also see he didn't have a whole lot of power, so 12 home runs. But over here... There's a, a couple of columns that we want to pay attention to. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. But the first one is a measure of fielding, so the FLD. And the way this works is the higher the number, the better the fielder. So an average fielder at a position is given a zero. So numbers below zero indicate a poor fielder, and in numbers above zero indicate uh, an accomplished fielder. And Loney is a pretty decent fielder. So that means we don't really have to worry about replacing him in late innings with the lead for someone that has a better glove. So he's a pretty pretty good fielder. We can also look at, at the base running column here. And again, the bigger the number, the faster the player. So zero would be an average speed for a baseball player. And what you can see is at least in 2011, Loney showed below average speed. So not someone we're going to expect to get a whole lot of stolen bases from. Now, we know that Loney is a left-handed hitter, and we might be interested to know, does he do well against both left-handed and right-handed pitching? And we can check that in fan graphs really easily by just clicking on splits. And remember, we're going to be using 2011 data, so I'm going to click on 2011 here. And he's always batting left-handed. Against right-handed pitching, he had a batting average of 310. But against left-handed pitching, he was much, much worse, only a batting average of 213. So if we have another first baseman on our team that can hit left-handed pitching, 
We might want to set up a platoon system where Loney plays against right-handed pitchers and his counterpart plays against left-handed pitchers. If we decide that we want Loney to play every day, then what we might decide to do is to move him down in our lineup against left-handed pitchers because he's not likely to have such good success. So that's an easy way to take a look at all the position players. You can assess their, their hitting ability and their fielding and their speed uh, by looking at fan graphs. And by using splits, you can tell if they're going to do equally well against left-handed and right-handed pitching. So let's consider a starting pitcher now. And let's just, as an example, use Johnny Cueto from the Cincinnati Reds. And remember, we're always looking at 2011. So and we see that in 2011, he started 24 games for the Reds, pitched 156 innings. Not a great strikeout pitcher, so six strikeouts per nine innings. But he also had pretty good control because he walked less than three batters per, per nine innings. Anytime you have a strikeout to walk ratio greater than two, it indicates you've got pretty good control. So you can see that six divided by a number a little less than three is a little more than two. So pretty good control. We can also see that he induced a fair amount of ground balls. So uh, balls that get up in the air have a chance of going out of the ballpark, but ground balls have a chance of being caught by, by infielders. So that's a good value. And we can see that um, on, on average, he allowed one home run every two games. So half a home run per nine innings. So that's keeping the ball in the ballpark. That's, that's something that we are going to be impressed by. Um, we see his earned run average is really quite, quite good, 2.31. So we're looking at Cueto here, and, and if we have him on our team, we're thinking uh, he definitely is going to be in my starting rotation. He's a really strong pitcher. He doesn't have a huge amount of strikeouts, but he doesn't give up very many home runs. So definitely going to be uh, a candidate for a spot in the starting rotation. Now let's consider a reliever. So let's go up and take a look at a reliever for the Chicago White Sox, Matt Thornton. And we'll go down to 2011 again. And as you expect for relievers, they don't have as many innings as starters because they usually come in for an inning or two at the most. But let's take a look at Thornton. He is really a power pitcher. Look, he almost had... Uh, 10 strikeouts per nine innings. So he's striking out a batter an inning. And he's also got pretty good control. His, his base on balls is only three per nine innings. So his strikeout to base on balls percentage is greater than three. That's really outstanding. So feel confident about bringing him in in the later part of, of games. He doesn't give up many home runs like Cueto, one every, every 18 innings or so. Um, he doesn't throw quite as many ground balls as, as Cueto, but his earned run average is, is uh, very impressive, 3.32. It's really quite good. So we're thinking that uh, Thornton definitely deserves a place in our relief core. But let's take a look at his splits. Is he equally good against left-handed and right-handed batters? Remember, he is a left-handed pitcher. So let's look at the splits. And remember, we're looking at 2011, so when you're looking at splits, because they can vary from year to year, and again, the simulation is going to be based on the 2011 data. What we can see is against left-handed batters and against right-handed batters, well, he's equally effective. That left-handed batters batted 250 against him, right-handed batters batted 248. So we feel pretty good that Thornton could be in the in the game in the late innings and it wouldn't matter whether he had a left-handed batter to face or a right-handed batter. He's going to be equally successful against both of them. But let's take a look um, at a different player. And so let's look at Francisco Cordera. who was Johnny Cueto's teammate on Cincinnati in 2011. You can see he's a right-handed pitcher. And we'll take a look at his data for 2011. Um, he batted, he uh, pitched 69 innings, showed up in 68 games, so he clearly was pitching about an inning a game at the most. Um, not a great strikeout pitcher, about five strikeouts per 
per nine innings, five and a half. And his walks about three, so not the greatest control. But he still had a really pretty impressive earned run average. So that's a, a good value there. And he induced about 50% of the batted balls were on the ground. So that's a pretty good value. But let's ask if he was equally effective like Thornton against lefties and righties, against left-handed and right-handed pitching. So I'm going to click on splits and go down to 2011. And what I can see is that against right-handed batters, he was cruel. They only batted 100, 158 against him. So he really shut down right-handed batting. But left-handers batted significantly better. They had a, a 241 batting average against him. So when we're using Cordero, we might want to bring him in as a specialist against right-handed batters. And we might have someone on our, in our relief core that was better against lefties. So we might want to make sure when we use Cordero that we're predominantly using him against right-handed batters. So these are some of the types of information that you can find easily on fan graphs to allow you to uh, set your lineup, determine your starting rotation, and to, uh, to, to determine who, who your relievers are going to be and how you're going to use them. So it should be pretty simple to, to take your 35 or so uh, man roster and divide it among the four of you uh, on your team and, uh, and do analyses here and decide which, ones, which players you want to keep on your 25-man roster and how you want to set your lineups. So you may want to have a lineup for left -hand, against left-handed pitchers and you may want to have a lineup against right-handed pitchers um, and you definitely will want to have um, your starting rotation uh, thought out carefully, your best, best starter first, obviously, and your weakest starter last. And you want to decide how many relievers you're going to carry on your team and how you're going to use them.